All right, so it all started when I came up with this really new concept for how to play Battletech. I called it the Dream Team, and the idea was, and a lot of players can do this. You come up with your, uh, it does not have to be your favorite, but it helps if it is. You pick an assault mech you like, you pick a heavy mech you like, you pick a medium mech you like, and you pick a light mech you like. And you make a lance out of it. It can be modified or it can be stock, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And for, for the most part, you can do whatever you want to as long as it gets to a certain battle value and your opponent's dream team has to be within a close battle value as well. I was thinking 10,000 since it's supposed to be a dream team and you can modify your mechs. So I was, I was doing this and I was thinking, this is a pretty cool concept. After all, I came up with like, you know, a heavy mech I liked, a medium mech that I really liked too, and then a light mech that I liked. But the funny thing is, is that there's no assault mech in this picture. There isn't. So I needed to kind of pick an assault mech for the dream team. Now I could just go, hey, let's do Mad Cat 2, right? It could double up on the Mad Cat theme. That's kind of tacky, so I didn't go in that direction. And so I stopped and thought, you know what? I have to do my research. I looked on Sarna. I looked on Ironwind Metals. And after a while, I like, you know what? I did my research, and I looked around. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to pick this little thing. And so I dragged in a new assault mech into my collection. I guess a, a new favorite of mine, which is a weird thing that happens. Sometimes you come across something that is new. And yeah, you can consider it a favorite. It's a young favorite of yours. Hasn't been there since the old days, but you get the idea. And that's where we came across this little sucker, which is the Sagittaire. It is a metal only mech. It is not one of the original mechs that comes with the Battletech game. It came about as a result of the split. And I am not sure if it was originally designed or thought of by original members of the team. But it showed up in the TRO that was first produced by FanPro after it split off and created the classic Battletech line from the main line of uh, Battletech, which at that point was going undergoing upheaval. So it's part of a newer continuity of mechs, which are often criticized for their aesthetic and appearance. One could, you know, look at this thing is not the... Uh, most organized of mechs. Now mine's modified. I do not have a stock Sagittaire in my collection. This one's modified for the Dream Team project. The uh, ERPPC has been replaced by an additional smaller weapon so that other things can be spent with a tonnage. And of course these weapons stand for other weapons. A Sagittaire overall is the kind of weapon that the classic guys kind of stay away from and people usually don't know about. Is it a good mech? I could argue that it is a good mech. It's kind of gimmicky. It suffers at certain kinds of uh, conflict and terrain problems. Let's go ahead and uh, delve deeper into what makes the Sagittaire, other than the fact that it's you know one of the newer miniatures and it's relatively expensive. I think the minimum price you'll pay for a Sagittaire is $15 out of the blister. Um, and yeah, this thing is only two inches tall. So here we have the Sagittaire as it appears on Sarna, the Battletech wiki. As you can see, it's a... Uh, you know, it's a Fedcom Civil War mech. It was pretty much built and designed for the Federated Sun side of that Civil War. Because, you know, everybody's sharing weaponry and uniforms and resources at that point. So if you're going to win the war, you might as well start out by making, you know, new mechs to fill a role. And since, of course, you're fighting in the uh, Federated Commonwealth, you've got plenty of urban terrain. Hence why you have this supposedly short-range assault mech, which jumps around like a very large and angry urban mech. It's not super fast. It's only a 3.5 movement. I mean, it's 95 tons, so, you know, it's not going to have much in the way of speed. It comes from Robertson Standard Battle Works. This place is known as a Federated Suns Marches uh, planet, and so it's pretty much on the border of Karita space. It has variants. I look at the variants and say, what were you thinking? I mean, the 14D is kind of nice because it goes back to the original idea. But pretty much the Sagittarius is designed, you have mix that targeting computer with various different pulse lasers, and then you just proceed to have a negative three modifier, which is great for if you're jumping and you want to avoid the penalty for jumping, or if you're getting really close to your opponent, you want to just grind them in the gristle. If you want to guarantee a hit, the Sagittarius will guarantee you a hit. It's pretty much one of the nastier uh, platforms and one of the very few stock platforms that says, hey, targeting computer plus pulse laser is a good thing. I mean, there's no way around it. That's what this thing's based on. 
So it's uh, it actually is based on a lot of things. I mean, just look at the thing. It's missing like weapons pouches and extra long hair. Um, and strange. Well, it has strange looking feet, but it looks like a Rob Liefeld design. Look at all those guns, man. I mean, this thing is a. Uh, it's over the top. Kind of has that like Godzilla mecha or you know Xeon mech from Gundam look to the bottom half, but the top hat half pretty much. I mean, this could be a starfighter of its own design. Just look at this thing. If you want to make something that's a gunship of gunships, yeah, you pretty much take a gunship and give it legs, and that's the Sagittaire. The Sagittaire did benefit from some special advertising. It was one of the few mechs to get the front cover of a TRO. TRO uh, 3067, uh, if I remember correctly. And here it is, just stumping around in a... I don't know why it's in a red and white paint job. That always bothered me with battle mechs and space marines. Why do you guys wear bright colors on the battlefield? Come on, battlefields don't work that way when you have guns. And it has its places in Battletech lore, but for the most part, it's just, you know, another mecha that shows up in the course of things. The mech has its purpose, but it's also effective on the game table unless you have, you know, open paper maps. If you play on just a flat terrain, this guy is not the greatest dude. He only has one ERPPC. We're going to go ahead and look at what the uh, Sagittaire would look like in the miniature. The Sagittaire's miniature is kind of a sloppy boy. It's got parts and spare parts. Now I've converted both of mine. Here we see where I first took hold of the conversion. I've stripped off most extraneous stuff and filed it down. What do you know? Here you can see where I've taken the additional bits from both ERPPCs, from both Sagittarius I own, and I modified them to be the side wings so it had bigger cannons instead of a plethora of smaller guns as well. My Dream Team Sagittarius is supposed to be a continuation of the original Sagittarius con concept. It maintains two, and only two, of the medium pulse lasers, and then it carries two snub-nosed PPCs. It also has, I believe that it first has a plasma cannon. This is a plasma cannon in this version. And then I have an additional, I think it's just a, a small laser or an ER small laser. It's nothing amazing. I keep the targeting computer. This thing is, that's the, uh, the light of an active probe. Allows it to actually have a view of the battlefield because not being able to find hidden mechs when you're running around an urban territory can lead to all kinds of nasty surprises. Now, that's not the only Sagittaire I have, and it's not the only Sagittaire I've modified. Here's the, uh, we saw the, the modification parts of this earlier. Look how sleek it is. You get rid of all the additional BS in the front. It has this nice triangular nose. It's got this nice sleek shape to it. It's actually a very respectable mech once you clean off the bullshit. It's got symmetrical sides now. It has packs four snub nose PPCs. And if it wishes to, in that little slot back there, it can hold additional weaponry. This little vent thing right here is where the cameras for the targeting computer are located, this thing right here. This is something I, I, I liked this version of Sagittaire, and this is why I would say that the Sagittaire makes itself out to be, despite its optimized payload that it comes with stock, the Sagittaire is a refit queen. It's a lot more fun to take the Sagittaire and modify it into something else besides what the designers intended so that it can actually serve you in a more custom role. And since the reason I play Battletech is to have that kind of engineer mad scientist game going on, why not pick an assault mech that allows me to get the best out of my crazy tendencies to modify shit? I had a bunch of sheets that I was looking over and I was going to determine what is the best actual layout for the Sagittaire. Because the worst thing about Skunk Works is you can fiddle with it. Here I have Battletech sheets that I've uh, printed off with various different Sagittaires for me to mull over. They're all based on the same concept. snub nose EPCs, coolant pods, puffer fish. I've also gone through, and you've noticed that the 3.5 speed has gone away. These are routinely 4.6 speed because that's a nice speed for an assault mech, and I'm not running away from that. It only caps to the, four, the three jump jets in a lot of these versions. But you'll notice some things jump up and down, like armor ratings and, you know, whatnot. So this is the first one I came up with, where it was just a coolant pod, some basic PPCs, the snub nose variety. I love that long, short range. So there's that. And I come up with this little sucker, where it's got three coolant pods. It still walks fast. It's got great rear armor, where a center armor uh, of 20. The front armor is only 39. So uh, 
it's not that badass, but it actually is pretty badass because you try to go and hit it in the rear center torso, you've got 20 armor to deal with, bucko. So then we had this version that I was screwing around with. The jump jets have been reduced. Um, instead of uh, snub nose PPCs all day, the bottom ones are large pulse lasers. So we have large pulse lasers playing around with snub nose PPCs for a combination trifecta of things it can do. And of course, this one. This one actually lost the targeting computer. Less jumping power. Jumping two is not that bad. If, if you come across a canyon, you can clear it with a jumping uh, jumping of two. You just, you know, this hex, next hex, there you go. So that's why you have a uh, jump rating of two. It's just as a backup. This guy is a more jump-worthy, armor-worthy, uh, large pulse laser carrier. Still just one coolant pot. This version is a kind of combination of everything. It's got three coolant pods. Yay! It's got large pulse lasers and some of those PPCs. Yay! It's got a reduced jump. This is a nice brawler. You can get into a brawl in a city and have most of your bases covered. With the exception of, this guy also was one of the versions that was missing a targeting computer. So which version of Sagittarius can I take? As far as options go, I'm a fan of going all the way crazy. Having a mix of uh, large pulse lasers and some of those PPCs. For reasons I don't have to explain. Yeah, I have a short range that suddenly you know creeps up into the three ranges, but at least I have that, you know, with a large pulse laser, I can use that medium range like it's short range and it's not gonna matter. So this is actually pretty well bracketed. And if I get closer, I just get really good at chopping up my enemies. I might want to make a version where it's all pulse lasers, because that could be kind of funny. Uh <laughs> four large pulse lasers. Well, my range got cut down, but I can now include more shit with the tonnage. I might even be able to recover a targeting computer or so. <laughs> so, it doesn't really matter which version I take. The thing is, is that the Sagittaire is one of those strange mechs where no one is going to cry if you chop it up. So you might as well chop it up. And it looks better when you chop it up, as I have demonstrated right here. I mean, is that not a good looking mech? Are you not entertained? I am. That's a nice mech. As opposed to one that was designed by Rob Liefeld. Yuck. It is by far one of the dorkiest mechs ever put in the assault category, though there are dorkier assault mechs out there. This, uh, this bucko is just designed to give you grief for looking bad, but it's also designed to, you know, occupy that really weird niche of I got close to you and I cut you to pieces, which is what the Sagittaire does. The stock version is actually a really, really mean machine. If you decide to modify it, which I recommend it, because it is, in my opinion, a slow, short-range fighter, and that's not a good thing to do in any you know, assault mech, my, uh, my recommendation is to, yeah, bring in the Solaris Skunk Works and see what you can do to make this Sagittaire a better beast. Hopefully you, uh, you liked this uh, video, and hopefully you got a laugh out of the Sagittaire, because the Sagittaire is not the best mech out there, but it's here and it's on my list. So... Thanks for watching and hopefully have a great rest of your week.